Hello everybody, it's Mary Lynn Harris here of Hard at Work and welcome back to a podcast series about how to create a legacy for yourself or your business. And so my intention of doing this podcast series, of course, is to help people um, create that legacy for the workplace. It's about workplace profitability, um, cooperation, kindness, all those wonderful things terms that we like to throw around <laughs> and so but today I'm uh, I have on the call with me is uh, Cheryl I met Cheryl about a year ago actually in July and uh, we were part of the launching the World Kindness uh, USA um, organization which has kind of shifted a bit since we first um, all went out there to launch it together but that's okay things evolve but Cheryl has moved on and, and she has this really awesome project and I really thought her story needs to be shared. So welcome, Cheryl. Hello, good morning. Thanks for calling. I'm glad yeah. to be part of this. Yeah, yeah. So we're so Cheryl, tell me um, a little bit about what you're doing and your project that you have at hand right now. Sure. I started a, a business um, with, it's called Pass Along Gifts. And it's the idea of it is, our mission is to share kindness and unleash the power of giving because when you give you really actually get more and so it's a project and a product that starts a little journey and you follow it okay. and you see where it goes okay. now, pay it forward into the world <laughs> yeah and she's an awesome artist as well she, do you paint all, all the cards Cheryl or oh, well yeah, initially I started painting you know the bright colored flower bouquets um, and and just because I like painting and I like the color, yeah. Um, but we do all different kinds of artwork. Uh, I'm looking for other artists, mm -hmm. and I'm, it's really a great way for artists to get a little bit of recognition, at a lower price point to, yeah. to get their product out there and pay it forward into the world. Right. And so we're kind of exploring that option right now as well. Okay. So Cheryl, tell us about a little bit more about your project. I know you shared. Um, it's about paying kindness forward and things like that. But tell us a little bit more story about, you know, how you really got into it. Yeah, well, I, this is nothing I ever expected to do. I started out as um, with my master's degree in organizational management, and I earned a lean Six Sigma black belt because I like to do process improvement. Mm -hmm. So that was all working real well for me, but I inherited a rheumatoid arthritis. And there's just nothing that you can do when you have that. But I was doing okay, still working, but found out it was in my spine uh, because yeah. I stopped, stopped being able to use my hands and coordination was off. Turns out there were four levels of my cervical spine that were being pressed and I had no fluid going through on some of those. So they did a surgery, not a fun one, but I got through it. Everything went just fine. I was doing great. Six months after that surgery, we were driving 55 miles an hour and somebody crossed the center line also going 55. We rolled twice, uh, landed the opposite, uh, overcoming the opposite traffic lane, but one screw popped loose, but everything held and I survived the crash. All of us walked out of our car. Wow. So it was an absolute miracle. Unfortunately, when you have an autoimmune disease, which rheumatoid arthritis is the autoimmune type, it made the disease worse. And so gradually I ended up having to have subsequent surgeries, my health declined, and my employer said, you know, you're entitled to long-term disability. Probably should take that. <laughs> so I took it very hard to kind of lose your identity mm -hmm. and um, your income. And, and when I filed for the disability, of course, they denied it. And then shortly after, my husband lost his job. So I've got these mounting medical bills, no income coming in because everything's in the denial stage. Uh, kids going through some troubles, teenagers, need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> and then a girlfriend moved in who'd lost her housing and was battling cancer. And so we all just were sitting there kind of going, uh, you know, numb. And I began, um, I wanted to go and paint and nobody would join me. So I did it at home on my own. I started painting these bright colored flower bouquets. And as I spread the paint on the canvas, I just felt something. I can't say that I was this wonderful thing, but I just felt something instead of numb. Mm -hmm. And I painted a lot after that. So I started collecting all these great colored <laughs> flower bouquets. 
And when people came over and they saw them, I said, pick one, pick one out that you like. Yeah. Here, enjoy it. I said, but don't bring it back. Uh, <laughs> I don't want them back. And when you get tired of it, because I know they're very bright, just find somebody else that will enjoy it and mm -hmm. pass it along. Right. And then eventually the idea occurred to me, you know, there's a lot of things that we have that are like that, that you love them and for a moment and for a season. But then, you know, the time passes and what do you do? Throw it out? Why not create art that's meant to pass along? Right. So that's what I did as I took and I reprinted my original artwork in a, a large card format like this. Yeah. And then I, I, it's a table tent design so it can stand by itself. And then on the back, you record the journey. Oh, okay. So you put a message who, when, and why. Right. And then it goes to the next person. They enjoy it. And then they also are encouraged to pass it on. So um, over, over time, we decided to add an online tracking feature mm -hmm. so that everybody can enjoy it. And when it started taking off a little bit, my uh, mentor said to me, what are you going to do with the money once you start making money? Because it's important to think that through before yeah. you're first with it. And I said, you know, uh, in the long run, it ended up that my husband got a job. I ended up getting the disability, the car accident settled. I mean, everything worked out just fine. My girlfriend's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> it's doing okay. And um, so I said, I don't really have to have the money. Let's give half of our money to charity. Mm -hmm. And that's what we decided to do. So it's a personal commitment that, that we made that this is what, what our organization stands for. Because when you give, you get. Right. So that's how it all kind of began. Yeah. And it's been a few years in the making, and I can always tell when I'm overdoing. I get a little bit tired, and yeah. symptoms flare up, and that's okay. Yeah. I just take it easy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great story, and I love what you're doing because we talked about it, uh, like about a year ago, about yeah <laughs> helping you get get it going and get some artists and. So I really think that, you know, in the art group, you can certainly post that you're I looking will. for artists. And, you know, it's always sound, sounds better coming from the person that is looking or right. wanting or desiring rather than necessarily always a third person because right. it's not that it's not valuable or um, it's not right. a recommendation, but it seems it's sometimes it's something connected to the heart, the heart message. Exactly. Is much better than somebody doing a third party endorsement, I guess. I think a recommendation. Yeah. And, so. and right now I've I've started a new partnership. Uh, yeah. I'm so honored with the American Cancer Society. Yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, it is uh well, see, my mom and sister are both breast cancer survivors. The week that we had that rollover car accident, yeah. my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer stage two. Oh, okay. And uh, that was in 2011. And then in 2015, my mother was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And while when that girlfriend that moved in with us in yeah. 2014, she battled breast cancer while she was still living here. Yeah. So it's really been near and dear to my heart. Anyway, I connected with somebody from the regional uh, American Cancer Society who's in charge of the, the pink campaign, you know, for October Breast Cancer Awareness. Yeah. She thought, oh my gosh, this could be the next ice bucket challenge. Right. Let's get some pink bouquets together. Let's right. create um, a theme. So mm -hmm. we create some within with like the real pink background and pink theme for the survivors. Let's celebrate those survivors. Right. And then how about really honoring the helpers? Those that have been helped people through the journey. Mm -hmm. Let's create one in yellow background. And then another one for those we've lost. Mm -hmm. uh, because some people have passed in this process. Yeah. It's, it's cancer. Yeah. And so I did a kind of a purple background yeah. and I created those, uh, that series and in, because partly uh, what I ended up doing um, in my journey was to hide the word joy in right. my paintings because the message for me was joy is always there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to look for it. Sometimes you have to look really <laughs> hard. <laughs> and in cancer, of course, you have to look really hard. So, of course, I hide that word in there. But then I added in some other words like celebrate and journey and survivor and uh, remember and mm -hmm. care and hope and love and lots of different words because I think it's just a fun way to engage people. And it's not just a piece of art. I want it to speak to right. them. Right. 
and hopefully it does. Yeah. So we're and using it. Uh, I should also connect you to um, a dear friend of mine who has a, uh, she had stage four breast oh. cancer and she survived and now she is um, helping other women go through awesome. this process of healing. That's wonderful. Yes. And there are so many wonderful survivor stories. And that's the reason we really want to keep doing this because I've looked at some of the statistics from 91 until now, and the rate of survivorship is just dramatically increased. So it's really helping create that awareness. And as a result, we, I am really working with the American Cancer Society and giving a hundred percent of our profits to mm -hmm. the American Cancer Society. So instead of just the normal 50, we're going to yeah. give 100%. And I'm extending that to sort of everything that goes through my website because we've got a bunch of different art pieces. Right. Um, it, we allow people to choose the charity if they're creating a custom order. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if they don't choose one, um, that's the one that we're supporting right now. Right, right. So Cheryl, um, can you tell us uh, how workplaces can help or support you? In oh, your well, see, and this is such, um, it, you know, the pass along concept is really great because you take a work of art and it can be anything. I mean, it can be a, a sunset. It can be um, a beautiful mountain top. It can be anything that you want, but then you add maybe an inspirational quote to it, something that's of value to your organization, like um, empathy, maybe mm -hmm. you're focused on, or courage or strength. And you add that little bit of a quote to it and you create a program mm -hmm. centered around that theme. And then on the, you create the pass along concept so that you're passing that along in the mm -hmm. workplace. Um, empathy or kindness, mm -hmm. you know, are, are values that transcend. And in a workplace, it can be so important because you are not only are you reinforcing the value, but you're actually asking people to look for that quality in right. others and pass it along. Right. Because that's part of the point of this is not just taking, but what an honor to get it, yeah. but then really seeking to actively look for that quality around you. And it's amazing how that spreads and, and cheers a workplace. It's, it's really a tangible way to put that quality in place. Mm -hmm. so I, love, I love doing that in the workplace. And for, for this campaign with breast cancer, We've got a variety of prints and designs. I, I've gone from just this, you know, large card style right. to some smaller um, kind of table tent designs. So it's this size, more five by seven. Same, same thing. Lift it up a little higher. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, you go. I can't tell exactly. It's a five by seven. And then, you know, again, the same design on the back, but it's a little lighter and smaller. Fits yeah. into a traditional envelope. Right. We passed along. We also did some magnets, which are really fun. You know, you get these nice, bright colored magnets. They can go yeah. on a desk drawer and the same pass along concept on the back. And then the other way that we've done them is in beautiful metal prints that go on a, a stand uh, that you put down below. They sit on a desktop or put them someplace on a countertop. Let's see it. Oh. <laughs> you put this metal print it's high gloss that if you've been in a lot of office places that it's the new style in art is metal prints okay. and and then on the back you again record who you give it to when and why and then that tracking feature is on the bottom so it's just a real simple yeah but more beautiful it's more of an art piece and this is where i'm i'm hoping to engage more artists yeah, in a real right. tangible piece like this because it really shows off their work in right. a beautiful design right so right. any of those are available and they're fairly reasonable you know the cards and magnets are only ten dollars and uh the the larger cards at eight by ten would be 20 and then the metal prints are 35 at the five by seven and 50 at the eight by ten so pretty reasonable and more than 50%, 55 to 70% kind of different price points right. on each. But that's what's going to go to the American Cancer Society. So oh, in some okay. cases, seven out of $10 is going to go to the Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. So tell case. us um, a little bit about um, what type of, I know it's kind of hard because you're doing um, a nonprofit collaboration, but 
what type of clients do you think that you're really looking for that really would help you move it forward? Well, I'm looking for uh, kind of three different kinds. Okay. Uh, the nonprofit community, of course, is a wonderful one because you're building um, connection and, and you know, low price point, you're kind of get, able to get your message out into the community. And what's wonderful about these gifts is they keep getting re-gifted. Right. And so people have an opportunity to donate to that cause as well. Right. Um, the other thing I'm looking, they think that this is wonderful in the workplace for people that are looking to build workplace engagement and again, create that custom design, mm -hmm. pictures worth a thousand words with your message. And as they pay it forward and pass it around, you're building that culture. Mm -hmm. The third type are people, uh, organizations that work very directly with customers and need to stay top of mind. Right. This is a phenomenal way. It's unique. Nobody's doing anything like this. It gets in front of them in a soft sell sort of way. Mm -hmm. you, you, don't, you don't make this all about, I'm a real estate agent and I'm the best. I won this award. Yeah. You really make it more about what you stand for and what you value in life and how you're contributing to the community. And then as it passes along, your name is getting out there as well. Right. So people that, uh, and even large organizations that need to do something creative, perhaps at the holidays, um, they're really looking for that wow. Mm -hmm. Different. Right. This right. is different. This is very different. And who, who needs more stuff? We kind of mm -hmm. really want all want a purpose. Right. Yeah, we're always looking at decluttering or getting rid of whatever <laughs> we have, right? Right. <laughs> well, we didn't give that away yet, but you know, but the more we do, you know, the less that we collect as well. Great. And so but it, it so does take a different it does take a different mindset though. Yeah. Because this is this is intentional regifting, which right. is very contrary to the way we do things right now. Um, we tend to Oh, I have this great card, and now what do I do with it? Now that it's sort of been here for a month, oh, and I feel bad throwing it out. Yeah. But to know that I'm going to spread that to somebody else who maybe needs that message, I'm going to look for somebody now. I'm going to be deliberate. Yeah. Different way. I'm having to educate a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Re-educating people about re-gifting and about passing it along. Hey, hang right. it forward. Right. Right. Yeah. Great. So any couple of tips or things you'd like to share before we close up? Well, I'm hoping uh, now for, we, we, you briefly introduced, because we met through World Kindness, yeah. and I just see that continuing. I really hear that as a strong message um, today in our world. And I think the more we focus in on positive and doing things like, like this, paying it forward, really noticing how many times people are doing kind and good things mm -hmm. I think that's so critical um, we hear all the negativity we hear all the bad but there is so much more that's good it's just yeah. bad stuff that makes the headlines <laughs> and i think that's where we we share the same mission with world kindness week coming up in november the first uh, the week of the 13th there yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be collaborating and sharing some very simple tools mm -hmm. to get that out into the workplace, out into the, into the world. Right. Just noticing more the good. Yeah. Um, you have a choice every day of what you're going to focus on. Yeah. And yeah. keeping that positive. Yeah. Positive, kind of gratitude. Yes. You know, like we're saying, when you're sick, you don't look at finding the words of joy and love. and no nation you just look at how horrible i am what's going on in my life right right and you know there's <laughs> it's easy to do it but I, i'm sure it's quite it's it's natural in some aspects but then let's be unnatural and get more positive more deliberate more deliberately kind yeah Choose it. yeah right. uh, the, the others are there yeah. <laughs> we yeah. hear the, the negativity yeah yeah there's always a lot of that but like you were saying i think it's more about you know just being conscious deliberate you know having positive conversations with other people and and helping them move forward you know wherever yeah. that is and sometimes exactly. we just have to be where we are because that's where we need to be you know kind of thing 
Absolutely. And that was where I was. I mean, I certainly was having myself a nice pity party for a long time. Mm -hmm. But um, at some point, you have to choose what you're going to do with the future. Are you going to stay stuck? Are you going to go down Mm -hmm. with the ship? Or are you going to choose to to look for what is joyful, what is good in the world? Right. Um, and, And I chose joy. Yeah. I'm so uh, glad that uh, you chose joy, Cheryl. Thank you. Such a blessing. So um, thank you for joining me today. And I'm sure that we'll get your message out there to lots of different people that really need to hear. Yes. Keep the encouragement up. Thanks for all you're doing too. (laughs) Appreciate it. Sorry it took me so long to get get back uh, and get this organized, but life evolves, you know? Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, girl. Well, take care, and um, we'll be chatting with you very soon. And so thank you for joining us today at the podcast about how to create an impactful legacy. And so being participating in Cheryl's project is one of those things that can help you create that impactful legacy for your business or for yourself. Thanks so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay, bye-bye.